Hi, I'm Carlos Sinelli from UCLA, and this is a talk recorder for Use R 2020. In this talk, I'll present the R package SenseMaker, which implements a suite of sensitivity analysis tools for ordinary least squares. But before I go into the details of the R package, I would like to motivate the importance of sensitivity analysis with a well-known real example, the debate on cigarette smoking and lung cancer that took place in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Back then, observational studies found a strong association between smoking and cancer. Smokers had nine times the risk of non-smokers to develop lung cancer. So this naturally leads to the question, is this association causal? Well, not everyone agreed with this hypothesis. And in fact, one of its most fierce opponents was Sir Ronald Fisher. Fisher argued that we could not rule out that an observed common cause explains the observed association. And theoretically, Fisher is right. Observational data alone cannot distinguish between the first model and the second model. So how can we move this debate forward? An important piece of the smoking and cancer debate was a sensitivity analysis, and it consisted of the following hypothetical exercise. So let's suppose for a moment that Fisher hypothesis were true, that is, cigarette smoking does not cause lung cancer. Now we can ask ourselves, how strong would this unobserved confounding need to be to explain all the observed association? That what was Cornifil computed, and they concluded that if smokers had nine times the risk of non-smokers to develop lung cancer, and this is not because cigarette smoking is a causal agent, then the unobserved confounder would need to be at least nine times more prevalent in smokers than in non-smokers. The opinion of the experts at the time was that no gene or hormone could possibly be that tightly linked to smoking, and Fisher hypothesis was judged to be implausible. So the logical conclusion of our sensitivity analysis is that an observed confounding cannot explain all the observed association, and there must be at least some causal path between cigarette smoking and lung cancer. So to sum up, why do we need sensitivity analysis? Traditional causal inference with observational data makes untestable assumptions about the absence of an observed confounders. And the truth is that hardly anyone believes that those assumptions hold exactly. So we need tools that make it easy to routinely discuss the sensitivity of our estimates when our assumptions are called into question, as it happened in the uh, smoking and cancer debate. So our goal today in this presentation is to learn how we can routinely perform these types of analysis for OLS estimates using the R package SenseMaker. SenseMaker implements the tools developed in our GRSSB paper, Making Sense of Sensitivity, Extending Omitted Variable Bias. So now let's see another example, and this time the example comes from political science. The R package SenseMaker comes with this real data set from a survey with the Furian refugees in Eastern Chad. Uh, so first we need to load the package with library SenseMaker as usual, and then call the command data darfur to load our data. Uh, details of the data set can be found in the help documentation. Our research question here is to understand how exposure to violence changed individual attitudes towards peace during the Darfur conflict of 2003-2004. Specifically, did direct exposure to violence make individuals angry and thus more likely to ask for revenge or did it make them wary and more likely to ask for peace? Now, this is a causal question, so we cannot answer it without assumptions. And the main assumption here is that government bombings and attacks by the militia were indiscriminate within village, with one major exception, because there was targeting based on gender due to sexual assaults. In other words, village and gender are sufficient for control of confounding, and we can estimate the cause effect of direct harm with the following regression, where we have the outcome, uh, peace factor, then the treatment indicator directly harmed, and two confounders, which are the gender and village dummies. And we can run this regression in R using the LM function and save the results in this object called Darfur model. And according to this model, we find a large and statistically significant effect, suggesting that those who were directly harmed became on average more per piece, not less. The previous assessment, however, relies on the assumption of non-observed confounders. And of course, as usual, not all investigators may agree with this hypothesis. For instance, 
after you write up your results and submit it to a journal, you will find out that Reviewer 2 thinks that although within village bombing was largely random, you still should have adjust for whether individuals lived on the center or the periphery of the village. That is, you should have run a regression that further adjusts for the covariate center. Or to make things worse, Reviewer 3 argues that not only you should have adjusted for center, but also for wealth and prior political attitudes as these are likely confounders as well. And the problem here is that none of these variables, center, wealth, or political attitudes were measured. So the question we want to answer is, how different would our inferences have been had we included them in the analysis as we wish we had included, or at least as the reviewers wished we had included. And this is what SenseMaker can compute for you. In particular, SenseMaker can help you answer the following questions. First, how strong would the particular confounder or group of confounders have to be to change the conclusions of a study? Second, in a worst case scenario, how vulnerable is the study's result to many or all unobserved confounders acting together, possibly nonlinearly? Third, are these confounders or scenarios plausible? Or more precisely, how strong would they have to be relative to observed covariates, for example, female, in order to be problematic? And finally, how can we present the sensitivity results concisely for easy routine reporting? So let us go back to our Darfur example and answer those questions using SenseMaker. Here I'm repeating the code we already had, loading the package, loading the data, and running our original LM model. And now the only extra step we're going to do is to begin the sensitivity analysis by applying the function SenseMaker to our original model, Darfur model. And the most important arguments of the function call are, first, of course, the model. And here we include the original regression, in our case, Darfur model. Second, we need to tell SenseMaker what the treatment variable is. And in our case, it's directly harmed. Next, we need to include the names of the covariates that will be used to bound the plausible strength and observe confounders. In this case, we put female because due to the nature of the attacks, we know there was targeting based on gender and it is hard to imagine an observed covariates as strong as gender. And finally, we tell SenseMaker how many times stronger the confounder is related to the treatment and to the outcome in comparison to the observed benchmark covariate, in this case, female. So here we are saying that we want to investigate the maximum strength of a confounder once, twice, or three times as strong as female in explaining treatment and outcome variation. Uh, there are other arguments to the SenseMaker call, and here I'm, I'm making use of default arguments. And you can check the details in the help documentation. So after calling SenseMaker, we can explore all the sensitivity results with the print, summary, and plot methods. The print method of SenseMaker provides a quick review of the original estimates, along with three sensitivity statistics suited for routine reporting. But here, instead of showing you the print output in R, I'm showing you a nice LaTeX table that you can obtain with the command OVB minimal reporting. And these simple sensitivity statistics already tell you a lot about the sensitivity of your estimate. So let's start with the partial square of the treatment with the outcome. This quantity measures how much residual variance of the outcome your treatment explains after taking into account what the observed covariates explain. But what is perhaps not that well known is that this quantity is also a sensitivity statistic, just like we had in the smoking and cancer debate. A partial R square of 2.2% here means that in an extreme scenario, even if confounders explained all remaining variation of the outcome, they would need to explain at least 2.2% of the residual variation of the treatment to bring down the estimated effect to zero. So this quantity shows the bare minimum strength that confounders need to have to explain away the observed association. But the partial square may be a too extreme scenario. So this leads us to the second sensitivity statistics, which is the robustness value. And here, our robustness value of 13.9% means that if confounders explain 13.9% of both the residual variation of the outcome and of the treatment, this is sufficient to explain away the effect. On the other hand, it also tells you that if you think confounders cannot explain 13.9%, neither of the residual variation of the treatment nor of the outcome, then you're safe. This confounder cannot explain away the point estimate. And we can also compute uh, robustness values that account for sampling uncertainty. And in this case, it would reduce to 7.6%. So note here that in this table, we already answered the first and second questions we had posed. 
these metrics quantify how strong confounders need to be in order to change our original conclusions. But now we have the hard part of sensitivity analysis, the plausibility judgment. We need to judge whether the values of 2.2% and 13.9% are good news or bad news. And no, the important thing here to note is that statistics itself cannot answer this for us. This is where expert knowledge needs to come in. But what SenseMaker can do, it can help you leverage expert knowledge regarding the relative importance of variables. So in particular, uh, we can compute these bounds. Uh, the bound is strength of an unobserved confounder with the same strength as an important observed covariate that you have measured. For instance, in our case, the bounds here in the lower corner of the table show that a confounder as strong as Fameo can at most explain 12% of the residual variation of the outcome and 1% of the residual variation of the treatment. Since both of those numbers are below the robustness value of 13.9%, we conclude that the point estimate is robust to a confounder as strong as female. In addition, since the 1% is less than the partial square of 2.2%, we conclude that point estimate is robust to worst case confounder as associated with the treatment as female. Now note that all these results are exact for single confounders and are conservative for multiple possibly nonlinear confounders, including functional form and specification of the observed covariates. So as we have seen, this minimal sensitivity reporting answers most of the questions we had posed, but we can further refine our sensitivity analysis with visual tools to explore the whole sensitivity range of point estimates and t-values, uh, and SenseMaker can help, with, help us with that as well. And the first plot I want to show you here is a default plot, a sensitivity contour plot of the point estimate. To obtain this, we can simply run the command plot dark forest sensitivity. Here in the x-axis, we have how strongly the confounder is associated with the treatment, and in the y-axis, how strongly the confounder is associated with the outcome. These two axes are measured in terms of partial square, which indicates the percentage of residual variance of the treatment of the outcome that the confounder explains. Now, for each pair of partial square, we have a contour line indicated the adjusted estimated effect. And this is the exact point estimate you would have obtained if you could run the regression with that confounder. So starting from the bottom left, we have the original estimate of 0 0.098, which assumes no confounding. And as we move along the diagonal, confounding is assumed to be stronger to the point of eventually flipping the sign of our estimate, which is represented here by the red contour uh, line at zero. And the red diamonds here indicate the maximum strength of confounders if it were once, twice, or three times as strong as female. And as we can see, such confounders are not strong enough to bring the estimate down to zero, although, of course, they could substantially reduce the effect size. Now, we can also make the sensitivity contour plot for the t-value for testing the null hypothesis of zero effect. And to obtain this, you can simply add the option sensitivity of equal t-value to the plot command. In this plot, the axes are, are defined as before but now the contour lines indicate the adjusted t-value. And note that here, the statistical significance is still robust to confounding once or twice as strong as female. However, we cannot rule out that confounding three times as strong as female would make the estimate statistically insignificant. Finally, the last plot I want to show you is an extreme scenarios plot. And you can obtain uh, those plots by adding the option type equals extreme to the plot call. So here the x-axis still shows the partial square of the confounder with the treatment, but now the y-axis shows the adjusted estimated effect. Then we consider different extreme scenarios for the partial square of the confounder with the outcome, represented by different curves. For example, the solid line here represents assuming the partial square of 100%, then the next line 75%, and the, and the other line 50%. And the red tick marks on the bottom show the bounds on confounding once or twice as strongly associated with the treatment as female. And as we can see, confounding once or twice as strong as female would still not explain away the point estimate, even in these extreme scenarios. So in this presentation, I only showed you the basic functionality of SenseMaker, and there is a lot more you can do. And if you're interested in applying these tools to your own work, I suggest reading the papers. Uh, there is the Making Sense of Sensitivity paper, which is the theory paper, and the paper SenseMaker, Sensitivity Analysis Tools for OLS in R and Stata, which is the software paper. 
And finally, I want to point out, we also have a shiny app uh, that you can explore those things in the web. Thank you.